Hello everyone, this is Shubham from Crytek Tech and I would love to review the iPad Air. Mind you, this is after the release of the iPad Air from 6 months ago. And this review is coming from the perspective of an iPad Pro user. I was an iPad Pro user 12.9 inch 2015 and I used it extensively for quite a few years. Now coming to the iPad Air, initially I felt a bit cramped compared to the Pro 12.9 inch but now I'm loving the design. And here's my review of the iPad Air. So I'm a university student in Australia and I usually use this iPad for media consumption slash study slash work purposes. So this is not the ideal way of taking notes on iPad but it really suits my needs as I use it for the university purposes and straight away for marking the documents. I also use this for surfing the web here and there, definitely use the iPad for YouTube. Now I noticed one thing that YouTube only runs well on an A12 Bionic chip and later my old iPad Pro 2015 couldn't run YouTube on 4K. Now let's start this review. Now if you want to see unboxing of the Apple Pencil and showing the overall build of the iPad, I have here the rose gold version of the iPad which is 256GB of storage and the touch ID sensor on the power button. Now I don't really like the touch ID sensor on the power button as my old iPad had it in the front and it was a real blessing. Even the face ID is really good on the new iPad Pros. The volume buttons are on the right of the iPad. This is the Wi-Fi version or the cellular one. So if you get the cellular version, you will get the SIM card on the right of the iPad. But mind you, this only supports 4G and not 5G like the Pro model. I have the temper screen protector on my iPad and I also have a transparent case. Use the iPad in the portrait mode. So I don't really like the folding case now the accessories are the ones that make this iPad really interesting as this comes with the Apple pencil and a magic keyboard I don't really have the magic keyboard with me but here's the Apple pencil and I have an external keyboard and mouse attached to it now if I want to jar notes or just scribble down whatever I need I do it quickly with the Apple pencil now this is really good for studies so if you want to get more productive you can add a keyboard and a mouse to it you can see if i really want to get productive i will instead use my macbook and not my ipad so yeah i will say that mac os is more mature than ipad os but if you're a student even the basic that is ipad 8 gen is more than enough for a student now I've written the whole script for this review on my iPad. So coming to the software side of things, this iPad is running on iOS 14. This is the final version of iOS 14 as you can see here and it has no major bugs. It runs so fluidly in this iPad. Now mind you this is the iPad Air from 2020. So this iPad is going to get software support for ages to come. Now iOS 15 beta has released for the public and I don't want to install it on this iPad as this is my personal device and I don't want to be a beta tester yet. It has some new multitasking options. Now let's start with the display of this iPad. No, saying the specification this is a 10.9 inch display with 60 hertz panel resolution of 2360 by 1640. Uh, this has all your phobic coating, true tone display, and 500 nits of brightness with DCI-P3 color gamut support. Now, keeping the specs aside, I must say that this is a really nice screen. Even if this is 60 hertz compared to the 120 hertz on the iPad Pro, this is a really nice display. I can even show you the YouTube footage shot by Jonathan in 4K HDR. 
the colors here are really awesome now comparing it with my note 10 plus the colors are not that vivid but yeah this, this is a really nice screen putting it up against the budget ipad i must say this is a really nice display with the ipad pro that just has a really nice display now comparing this screen with the 12.9 inch pro i guess the 12.9 inch pro does have a really big screen as it can open two apps side by side with a full screen and i really enjoyed the experience on that but taking into account this ipad pro i can certainly use this over an ipad mini which has this really small screen compared to this one coming to the specs of the ipad this has an a14 bionic chip with 4 gb of ram and 256 gb of storage specifically for this model now i must say the a14 is a really good chip with the four graphic cores and it just performed like a champ this is the same chip that is found on the 12 pro max now comparing this with my old ipad pro which had a9 x chip this is a real significant upgrade i must say the 144 display might limit the chip a bit but in games and day-to-day -day tasks it's a breeze I won't show you the benchmarks as it's not that relevant to my use case but I will show you some clips of my games that run on this iPad and they just run smoothly. Here's a Genshin Impact test. Like if you're considering this for gaming this is a really good option. And if you want a COD test it will be at the end of the review. Now coming to the battery life of the iPad, it gives me around 8 hours or so, so let me go to the screen time. Here you can see I get 6 hours with even more battery remaining. So this is easily a 2 day iPad, even like when I'm playing 2-3 to three hours of PUBG, it only drains about like 30-35% to 35 of battery, which is not really bad. This is if I am including the full brightness and full volume. For someone who consumes a lot of media, I must say this battery life holds up pretty well. Even while soft browsing or watching videos or web surfing. Now the battery life may depend from person to person. So I can't say your use case. But yeah, it will definitely go for more than 2 days. Now this iPad has a single camera on the back. This is 12 megapixel and it can record 4K and the front camera is 7 megapixel. Now I don't really use my iPad for radio taking or photography but it just does the job that is scanning the documents or just facetiming anyone. Now comparing this with the normal iPad that is 8th generation which has definitely weaker cameras compared to this and the Pro has an ultra wide camera that is 12 megapixel so those are really good cameras but comparing them with iPad Air so the camera just does the work for me it's not a high priority but yeah the pictures taken from the camera are satisfactory concluding my final thoughts I will say if you don't need the laminated display as well as a better A14 chip if you're fine with the A12 chip and an older design I think the iPad 8th generation is a better bang for your buck compared to the iPad Air especially if you're okay going with the 32GB variant now comparing this with the iPad Pro iPad Pro is a bit expensive especially the 12.9 inches comparing this with the 11 inch iPad Pro it has a 120Hz display and an M1 chip which makes it a tad bit better than the iPad Air but most people don't need that upgrade anyways so comparing it with the 12.9 inch Pro that has a better display with the mini LED on it and I guess that's just novelty factor if you want a better screen, a Thunderbolt port, a better processor, a better display yeah you can go for the 12.9 inch if you have already made up your mind iPad Air is a no brainer so you can go with it any day it is a great product and the software is going to last you for a long time i hope you like this video please like and share and subscribe to the channel